you have your life on the line. Oh, no. And one of these two players needs to hit a shot. <laughs> Patrick Beverly or Russell Westbrook. Who's who's hitting the shot? And and it's and it's Russell Westbrook right now. It's not it's not the Russell Westbrook that we know and love. It's the one that that can't hit a banker to save his life. How how far is the shot? <laughs> they just have to hit a shot. Is it it's a free throw? No, just a shot. Make a shot. Make a basket. One of them oh, make I'm, a basket. I'm saying like how far like how far away is the shot? Is it You're making this too complicated. No, they no. no it matters. It no, matters. it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm one taking on one, rest then. one on one with a defender. Hit a shot. Can you oh, get a basket? Okay, one on one. one, on one. I got you. Uh, Russ, of course. Patrick Beverly can't take anybody off the dribble. It's You're gonna Russ. die. You're gonna oh, die. Not. You're gonna Pat die. Be- Pat Bev, who he You're, tricks you. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> uh, apparently, so did Russell. So did Russell. Do you want to form an alliance? with me absolutely i do welcome into another episode of the alliance i'm spencer davis with saturday road that's Derek peterson with saturday out west Derek, we just saw the brackets get revealed any big takeaways right off the jump i would like for my bracket to go better this year uh i feel like i'm in a good place for it i went seven out of ten on our conference tournament picks last week on this video but I also picked Cal to beat Washington State in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament in a picking all the games piece that I put on my website. So I think those kind of cancel each other out. So as long as I can bat 500 with this tournament, I think it'll be good. Last season was not a good one. No, I mean, I it, you know, it's hard to remember to year, year to year how we do. We just kind of assume that we did badly, right? I mean, that's that's how this goes. It's hard. To... I, I believe when in the family pool, um, some of the elderly family members that do not watch sports fared better than, uh, than I did with the bracket. It's, it's not never what you want, never what you want to see. Um, we're going to start off here. We're going to identify some double digit seeds that we think are going to go far. Now far is relative, right? When you're talking about double digit seeds, but I think ideally we're talking about the second weekend. We're talking about teams that we think we can get to the sweet 16. I think we each have two or three. Derek, who is your first team? Uh, first of all, what an excellent, Segue, segue, you know, to talk about how all of my picks last year sucked, and now I'm going to give you picks. Um, who is my first team? Well, I've got South Dakota State, first of all, beating Providence in the first game. Um, South Dakota State has won like 26 games in a row. Uh, it's, it's a little bit less than that. I think 20, 20-something. They've won 20-something games in a row, which is absurd. They've only lost twice this year. Um, they're really good. That'll be a first-round matchup. That'll be fun. You are a noted Providence hater um, yes. on this. I on this. also have, yeah, I also have South Dakota State in the first round. Yeah, I think they can they can win. This is not a double digit seed. I don't have a ton of double digit seeds going. Um, I'm not big on the Miami Hurricanes train like you are, but I do have Murray State beating Kentucky in the second round and getting to the Sweet 16. I do have that, which which might cause an uproar because I like Kentucky, uh, but I think Murray State deserved a higher seed, and I think Murray State gets uh, pegged at the seventh spot just so that you can get a, se- a second round matchup with Kentucky. Um, and I think that they turn around and, and bite the selection committee in the butt for that one and beat Kentucky. Murray State's interesting. I mean, a lot of these uh, mid-majors get under right? Like Loyola should not be a 10 seed. Um, I think San Francisco should probably not be a 10 seed. These, these guys are all like top 30 in the net. And Murray State is right there with them. They're at 21. Uh, but I have Kentucky winning the national title. Spoiler alert for when we do final four picks later. So I am not there with you. Uh, I do have, I do have Murray State. No, I have San Francisco winning this game because I have all four 10 seeds. You do. So yeah. I do. Um, so we'll see. But I, I, you know, Murray State has been interesting. There, there's no John Morant or even a Cameron Payne on this team, but um, they, ha- they do win a lot. What do they have? Two losses all year. So that's, I mean, yeah, they're 27 and two. Um, 15 and two away from home. Um, pretty good track record there. I really like Vermont. Um, I watched a little bit too much of Vermont this week <laughs> and they're just kind of a fun team. And if, I, I don't know if this site is out there um, as much as like Ken Palm or even like Bart Torvik site is, but there's a website called evanmaya.com um, that tracks advanced college basketball analytics. And Vermont has the, according to this website, 
Vermont has the third most efficient five-man lineup in the entire country this year behind Gonzaga and Arizona. Um, and, you know, depth, as you get into the uh, NCAA tournament, doesn't matter as much. You really just need five, six, maybe a seventh guy to do some real damage, you know, only a 40-minute game. And so I have Vermont going to the Sweet 16. I have them upsetting Arkansas and then upsetting UConn before they uh, meet their demise against Gonzaga. Yeah, I also have Vermont beating Arkansas uh, for all of the same reasons that you just said. I do not have them beating UConn, though, um, but I do have them beating Arkansas. Yeah, I like Arkansas, too. I mean, they're, they've they they've had a really good year. I, I To be honest, I came in – I knew before the bracket was released that I was going to pick Vermont to win at least one game uh, because of that stat that I just mentioned, and so it's unfortunate. And uh, I, I don't love it as much that it's against Arkansas. I was hoping for – Oh, like a Wisconsin matchup or something like that, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe LSU or, you know, somebody in that vein. UCLA would have been great. Um, sorry to – I know that you probably wouldn't agree with that, but I, I think that Vermont can beat that caliber of team pretty consistently. Interesting. Um, I, how many Big Ten teams do you have advancing to at least the Sweet 16? Because there are nine Big Ten teams in the tournament, and I only have, I think, two of them get into the Sweet 16. Um, I have three. This is an overrated conference. Yeah. I mean, getting nine teams in while the Big 12 only gets six in is pretty rough. Um, well, I I just mean, I mean, oh, Michigan is in and Texas A&M is at home. It doesn't make any sense. It's not, I, I, it's not, fair. it's that. not fair. No, it's not fair. It's not, it's no, not appropriate. I mean, it's Rutgers is the one that, that. Either of them, like, neither of them should be in. That's a, no, it's a Mich- seven bid league. Mich- seven bid league. I, I think Mich- I think Michigan deserves to be. In. Michigan is thirty fourth in the net. They're they're fine. They're uh, forty five spots higher than Rutgers in the net. Rutgers shouldn't be anywhere near this tournament. Rutgers has three losses outside of the top two quadrants. They Rutgers lost to DePaul, Lafayette, and UMass. All right, like they're they're terrible. They lost to Northwestern. They lost to Maryland. They lost to Minnesota. They have so many losses outside of the top ninety of the net that. And I know they have all these great wins, but um, no, I, Notre Dame is going to be is going to beat Rutgers in Dayton. I, I think handily. Well, I, Rutgers might not even beat. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Um, I, I mean, Texas A and M is right there next to USC in Ken Palm. USC is a seven seed, and Texas A and M was I, I was think, was yeah. fourth in the replacements. Fourth. Yeah, that that was crazy. Them being behind Dayton is nuts. Uh, I don't remember who the fourth team was, other than Oklahoma. Do you remember who was in between Oklahoma and AM? I do not. Uh, I was I was more just taken aback by AM's spot and been, all of it. It may have been SMU. Um, Possibly, but yeah. But, a- AM and Oklahoma should should be in. I think. I think yeah. we we should probably talk about the snubs a little bit, and I, I think that those are the two for me. I mean, those are the top two teams in the net that did not get in. The Big Ten had nine teams in there last year and fell on its face. Yeah. Um, if it happens again, we're gonna we're gonna have to reevaluate how we evaluate that conference. In uh, terms, what are other what what other double digit seed? Do you have do you have another one? Yeah, I got Loyola. Any, <laughs> perfect perfect Loyola segue. Again? I've got Loyola beating Ohio State. I think that I mean that you could put you could yeah. flip the seeds in that game. I I, I also should. have Loyola winning that one. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the three Big Ten teams that I have are uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, and who's the obvious one that I'm missing? Purdue. Purdue. I, I mean, I've been a Purdue believer all year. I'm going to go down. I'm willing to go down with the ship. Uh, I picked them to win the Big Ten title. They were okay today. I mean, they, they, Iowa won that game pretty handily, but I'm, I'm just willing to go down with the Jay Ivey ship. I think he's the best guard in the country. And um, if, if Purdue, if that blows up in my face, then, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. There are there are worse teams to go down with. Yeah, I mean, it's you know you gotta you gotta pick somebody right, and I, I say that like I only I have them in the Sweet Sixteen. I, I have Kentucky beating them. Uh, that is a, an excellent Sweet Sixteen game that I hope happens. I have them losing to Texas. So I have Texas losing to Virginia Tech. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be a fun tournament, man. Yeah, I, I, another double digit seed here. Uh, Virginia Tech who's on fire right now. They just beat the top three teams in the ACC back to back to back come. And then before that hit a buzzer, buzzer beating three to be Clemson. So uh, they're super confident right now. I don't think they have enough guard play to beat Purdue, but man, that team's playing well right now. I, I wouldn't want to see them. Well, here's one. It's not necessarily like a double digit seed upset, um, but I like the potential Iowa, Kansas sweet 16 game for the right to go play like 
Auburn or Wisconsin, or I guess in, in your case, Miami, um, like that Kansas Iowa game, that should be an elite eight game. That should be, you know, yeah, for for the re- like it's it's sad that that one's not for the the regional. Yeah, Kansas Iowa is going to be an awesome game. Uh, you alluded to it. I mean, I, I think Miami's going to beat Auburn. If I mean Miami might lose to USC, but Miami Auburn is exactly the team that if Miami is out on the front foot, they can beat. Like Miami, Miami plays four guards. They have a stretch five, so you're going to have Walker Kessler having to defend out on the perimeter. You're not just going to be able to sit back with him in the paint, or Miami's just going to get open threes all day. And I, I mean Miami has really struggled defensively this year, but so have Auburn's guards on offense, right? I mean it's it's been a nightmare and. I mean, I should say, I shouldn't say it's been a nightmare. I mean, Wendell Green was really good the other night, but it's been inconsistent enough that I think Miami could catch them on the wrong, on the, on the wrong night. Oh, I think we've kind of talked about a couple of them, but let's just do it now. Who are your four final four teams? As of now, I ha- and I'm going to try to stick with this. Uh, I have Duke, Kentucky, Arizona, and Iowa, and I don't feel good about any of them. It'll probably change like <laughs> what, six or seven times by the, by the time we hit this. I, I mean, I'm going to try not to like here's the, I mean, Duke and Gonz- I have Duke and Gonzaga in the elite eight and they already played once this year. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't really trust Gonzaga. Right. I mean, talk about guards that have struggled with the wrong time. Right. I mean, we've seen it against St. Mary's mostly, but um, I don't know. I mean, like if Duke gets to the elite eight, I think they will be Gonzaga. The problem is they might lose to Davidson. Right. Yeah. I mean, the way that they, I mean, they've been terrible lately. So um, I've got that matchup. I mean, I've, do you have Arizona and Tennessee in the South? I have, yeah, that, I, that game is going to be wonderful. If, if Tennessee if wasn't has, in, yeah. if Tennessee wasn't in that region, I'd pick, I'd have Tennessee as a final four team playing Arizona. Um, yeah. Yeah. My four teams are Gonzaga, UCLA, Arizona, and Iowa. We have, uh, we have two of the four. Do you have Duke? Where, where do you have Duke losing? I've got Duke losing to Tech in the Sweet 16. I could get behind. I mean, I, I watched them in the Big 12 tournament this week, and Tech, Tech was good, um, but they were not. Like, they almost lost to Oklahoma, and neither of those teams really played well. So Texas, Tech is a team that seems to play up to the level of its competition. And like we said, with the way Duke has been struggling, I could definitely see uh, Tech getting by them there. Um I just don't particularly ever trust Duke in the tournament and considering, you know, big stakes final game against North Carolina in the regular season and they blow it and then blow it in the ACC tournament. I, yeah. I just, I, this just feels like, you know, it, as nice as it would be to get like that big send off for coach K, like I just don't ever yeah. trust Duke in the tournament. So with, with Davidson, like I thought long and hard about picking Davidson to beat them. Um, then I think tech, I think tech finishes them off. Um, the, I'm surprised you didn't call me on the UCLA thing. I, I like UCLA. I, I mean, look, this is, we see this kind of thing in the NBA sometimes, right? Where like a team wins the title or, you know, wins their conference. And then the next year they kind of sleepwalk through the regular season and find a way to flip on flip the switch. I just trust this UCLA team. Um, I, I trust that they remember how to win these games and they're in a lot better situation than they were last year. I think that they're way too talented to lose to St. Mary's. Um, Baylor is really good, but, but UCLA has just so much more offensive firepower than Baylor does. Um, I mean, if, if UCLA can get that into the seventies, I, I think they're going to be fine. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah. they were a final four team last year as an 11 seed. And, yeah. you know, instead of kind of, like you said, coasting through the regular season, they looked at the regular season as a chance to sort of validate their final four run last year. And then, they're up double digits on Arizona in the second half of the PAC 12 title game. They just have so many ways that they can hurt teams. I think UCLA should have been a three seed. First of all, I I think UCLA can absolutely make a run of the final four. They've got three guys who could be a number one option on any given night in Tiger Campbell, Jaime Jaquez and Johnny Juzang. Juzang's playing better, which is good. And then they've got, you know, they've got a guy in Jules Bernard who can be sort of a lightning rod wild card guy. And then Jalen Clark is going to be one of the best defenders in all of the tournament. Um, and the way that Jaime Hawkes has been playing, he's a legitimate matchup issue for any team that plays yep. him. Um, so I think they could go, I, I, but do we want to give uh title picks? Do you want to go that far? Yeah. Let me, um, 
let me make one adjustment here real quick and then we can do title picks. You're I, already I making an adjustment to the bracket? I just, I just, I just made a change. I'm, I'm, Villanova is going to the title. I, I have them beating Tennessee and Arizona now. I, I just thought it over. I realized that Colin Gillespie has, has done this too many times and they're going to go to the Final Four and I have them beating Iowa in the Final Four and I, I, I have Kentucky winning it all. So Who, who's, your, who's your title? When you, when you were first like, okay, I'm making a change real fast. It's like, I convinced you and brought you over to the UCLA side of things. And you're like, nope, I'm going way wild card. I'm going with Villanova, a team we haven't talked no. about at all. But we no, haven't yeah. talked about I, them uh, at all. <laughs> I, I don't know why, you know, when I filled, the, filled out this bracket, I just automatically said, oh, yeah, Tennessee will beat Villanova because they just won the SEC title game. No, Villanova just won the Big East. Screw that. Vill- Villanova's going, going to the Final Four. Okay. I have Arizona beating Iowa. I have Gonzaga beating UCLA. And I have Arizona beating Gonzaga. They're, Arizona's the best team in the country right now. I don't think it's close. What? What? Real quick, we're going to get out on this. What percentage of our Final Four teams are making it past the first weekend? <laughs> oh, first weekend? Uh, yeah. I, you know, I think a hundred percent. I don't. I, no way. I, it's I less was, than a hundred percent. I was not losing to Richmond. Um, it's less than a hundred percent. They're not losing to South Dakota State. Okay, fine. Like, what do you want to say? We got how many teams I mean, do we have between the two of us? I'm, I'm how much saying overlap was than, there? I'm saying it's less than 100. percent That's that's what I'm sticking with. Okay, well, okay, all right. No, you got to give a number. If you're gonna go out on a limb, there well, you got to give a I number. I'm not gonna do math here. We got to we got to get out of here. Well, I mean, we got I got four teams. There's two team overlap. So what? Six teams total. I think five out of six will make it, but I think I think somebody's going down. Duke. No, I think we have seven because you don't have Villanova. Oh, that's right. You changed it. Yeah. So the only final four team that we agree on is Iowa, a five seed. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, all right. We're going to end it there. You guys, uh, thank you guys for hanging with us here on another week of the Alliance. We, we will be back next Monday to recap round ones and round one or two and preview the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Appreciate you guys watching and you all have a great week.